Good afternoon and welcome back to Pro-Am Day here at the Volvo Ocean Race in Miami in the Sunshine State of Florida. We've had two Pro-Am races so far. First one run by Camper, second one run by Abu Dhabi. And we're into race three now and the breeze looks like it in. In the, um, in the commentary box with me, uh, world champion sailor Peter Lester. And it looks to me like there's ooh, a that small breeze certainly does the wind has settled in it's gone to the right as we were talking about in race two and with that right hand shift the breeze has settled into a something that's a little bit more normal from here we can see the start line there's the top mark they go twice round uh, we're in for a reaching start this time uh, come off the line the guests on board don't have to do upwind tacking they come up around the top mark down to the bottom mark gate up to the top and then back to the finish so the getting the run to the line will be um, the key here, Martin. But we can see, you know, there's a bit of weight coming off the boats now, a bit of bow wash. The conditions certainly look the best that we've had here on Friday. On board with Chris Nicholson at the helm of Camper. Uh, and one of the guests there is on the grinder. On the grinders and... Uh, there will be a little bit more activity. Full football team on the fordick, man. Yeah, and there up in, in the, just walking towards us now, that is Nick Burridge, who is the new boy. He's been promoted from the shore crew onto the race crew because of an injury to bowman Mike Pamenter, mid bowman Mike Pamenter, who's also the boat captain. So Nick Burridge uh, is one of the riggers, and uh, now he's got his big chance, been his dream since he was three years old, and now it's coming to fruition. On board now with Kenny Reed and Puma Ocean Racing, powered by Berg. It's coming up to 1.45 to go. Kenny Reed, VHF radio, firmly in his grip, listening to the race channel as we look over at the committee boat. We've got uh, just 0 0.8 up to the top mark, wind direction 030. Reaching start, Telefonica. Again, guests on the, on the grinders, getting a real taste of what it's like to race on one of these greyhounds of the ocean, uh, the finest, fastest ocean-going yachts in the world at the moment. And there's your fleet, and they've got a bit of a wriggle on. Yeah, they're lining up early too, the fleet uh, on starboard. They are still back from the line. They've got a minute to kill, or 55, 53 seconds. Abu Dhabi taking that Woodward position, and Walker on the helm is we just look now for the committee boat. Is he, can he lay through or is he locked out? No, they're down towards the pin end actually. So there's plenty of, um, plenty of distance between the boats and the windward end. So that pin end is closer with the line bias to the top mark. That's why the teams are pushing hard. We can see midline down towards the pin end. So if Group Armour can get their um, time on distance clean at that lured end, just coming up 15, uh, 18 seconds to go. 15 seconds. As the fleet now line up pro am race seconds. three as we count down to the start. Oh, they look quite Five, early right. down at that Four, lured end. Three, wonder two, about line bias. One. Yes, Puma's called oh. back. Recall. Individual yeah, recall. recall. Puma back. Telefonica and Puma. Te I repeat, individual recall. Telefonica, Telefonica and, Telefonica and, Puma, and Puma, Puma are over the line and at certainly time on distance they looked pretty advanced. We could see Telefonica for sure, but Puma have been called back. So we can see Puma, Kenny Reed dials down, Telefonica will be doing the same. And that opens up now for Group Armour down at that lured end. So that is the penalty that you incur if you jump the line or OCS on course side of the line. You've got to return behind the start finishing line clear and then start again. And in a race like, a short race like this, they're done and dusted really, aren't they? Pretty they're tough, sunny, uh, you know, it's... What, has to be something fluky to get them back into it. 0.8 of a mile to the top mark. It's only, what, a four mile or 3.6 mile course. 
is we see Telefonica now have returned behind the line. They are now clear to go up towards Mark 1. But up, up in the distance, we can see the fleet. That was Abu Dhabi, uh, Group Armour. Sanya and Group Armour are fighting it out for the lead. So here's Puma coming back, doing the restart. Well, you could put that down to practice. That's something that they'll be desperate to avoid tomorrow because that really would be costing them incredibly valuable points. Uh, if you were to uh, do that again, that would be grim. Uh, but they're off and, uh, and running now. And Rubama and Sanya looking good up at the front. And it looked like they were, getting, they were nicely lined up on the line for that for that void yeah they think? were and they the, the, this little gaggle of boats weren't uh, over the line the boats that are trailing were and it's uh group armor and sanya who are slightly bow forward and uh we can hear there the generator running that runs the hydraulic system that operates the canting keel so group armor is there's the bow of Camper just pushing forward. We can see the bow sprit protruding from the bow. That's where the downwind sails, the Jenikas fly off. I understand, Martin, we are, when we go to virtual, that um, we haven't got the data for, for Sanya. Sanya. Well, they'll be so working Sanya, on that, the virtual Sanya, boys, I no doubt. I think um, have pushed forward. So the reason Sanya are not showing on the data, so it's Sanya just ahead down to Lourdes, Sanya, Group Armour, Camper. Then just behind them we've got Abu Dhabi. So Sanya, Mike Sanderson stole the march <laughs> on the, uh, in the start. Well he's shown he can, he can uh, really extract the best out of this. There in the middle is Tiger, a Chinese businessman who is uh, first Chinese sailor on the Volvo Ocean Race. Tang Zhang He, nicknamed Tiger, he's living living out his dream, and it's an extraordinary dream. The whole story of his life is a bit of a dream, really. The guy on the left with a hat on backwards, Tang is the, the name, Tiger. It's the top mark there, Martin, yellow inflatable. We can see Sanderson brings the boat up to windward of the top mark, so the radius of turn will mean they shave past the mark as they head back down to a mark two. So Sanya will be first round. As the boat jibes, sails. Janai gets passed through, just making sure that that top baton doesn't get caught up in the rig. Second round will be the group armor and then camper. There's the Nicholson. new boy, Nick Berridge, grinding away. Steve Bannatine on the left there. It's uh, a little bit quieter as they come around. Gee, they park up when yeah, they, they, uh, do they do that turn. They use so much uh, apparent wind speed, apparent to, to generate the, the momentum to push the boat forward. Of course, when they go around the mark, they, they wash all that off. The, the dynamics of the boats change. It takes a while for the boats to generate the, the speed to push forward. So Abu Dhabi just trail there behind Camper, and then we'll look for the boats that were called over the line. They'll be next around the mark. It's going to be Telefonica next. Now they've had to avoid those boats exiting the mark, which will mean um, this top mark rounding for Telefonica, she's going to come in a little bit slow, then essentially do a, uh, a right-hand turn, and that will really park the boat up. And there's Puma coming. Now, I heard a whistle in there, Martin. There's been an umpire call of some description. I didn't quite see what it was. I would, I would expect it was the intersection of the boats coming up towards the mark, probably Telefonica against that uh, group. And there's a luff going on there. I think they might, they might have fouled out um, against Puma. And that, that's uh, Camper and Abu Dhabi. I think there was an incident in there. 
And of course, Puma would have been coming in there on starboard. On starboard. Yeah. So Kenny Reed just managed to nail one back. Kenny Reed's actually got a starboard on both boats. On oh, they're doing penalty turns. They're now. doing penalty turns on Camper and Abu Dhabi. Clever. There's oh, the red there's flag. The red flag. Yeah. Well, costly. <laughs> all of a sudden, all very interesting and a bit of a problem there on. Um, yeah, on, on Telefonica. Uh, it's all happening here in the third Pro Am race uh, on Volvo in the Volvo Ocean race here in Miami. And uh, but Kenny Reed's back in it. Here he is. And, uh, <laughs> we can see, look at the speed difference here between Puma and Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi are, are locked up behind um, Telefonica and they did that mark rounding, and that's opened the door there for. Puma to come rolling down over the top of Abu Dhabi. Now the issue for Puma is they are the windward boat. They're required to keep clear if Abu Dhabi luffs. So that means the bow of the boat would move from right to left. But I think Puma is going so fast they're just going to blow down over the top of Abu Dhabi. It's looking that way, they're picking up their speed now. So oh, look how costly it's been for this group, how distant Group Armour and Sanya are up in the front. They're gone. They're gone. They are absolutely gone. Is this... Uh... Speed difference, yeah. if you look yeah. at uh, yeah, the looking, two trailing yeah. boats, look at the speed difference there with Puma, who have passed Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi are just parked in their wake. In the middle is Camper with Emirates Team New Zealand. Dividing the fleet. We're not seeing Sanya there, but uh, she, the invisible yachtman stealth mode, you might say, is this one. This is the camera from the very back of the boat. It's uh, fixed above the sat dome on the stern. They're moving along very nicely, aren't they? They've got, got some good breeze. Well, once here. the leading boat gets free, it gets into clear wind, and you're not getting. Uh, really dictated to by the trailing boats and we could really see that with uh, that, that incident there was uh, Port Starboard penalty against Camper and, and um, Telefonica from Puma but in the meantime it was Sanya and uh, Group Armour just uh, they were off they were in clear wind and so it's almost turned into a two division race this one with uh, these two boats Sanya leading Group Armour and then behind there's Camper, then Telefonica, Puma, and Abu Dhabi. It's so much to be learned for these guys out doing a pro-am race out here oh, at, the, at the import. Limited value, to be honest, Martin. Although I think there's a little bit to be learned in the uh, just the timing of the start when you decide to to pull the trigger. And we could, uh, you know, a couple of boats made mistakes. They were over the line early, so I think that's the biggest learning. But just uh, reaching up and up and down the bay, really, it is a, is a it's a day for the guests on board. And those people on Sandy would be enjoying this because they wouldn't be expecting to be up at the front of the fleet. It's a neat job by my Mike Sanderson bottom and mark, his crew. It's bottom mark gate actually. There's a left and right option and. Uh, Group Armour went round the white inflatable, so now they're set up down to lured of Sanya. As we look at Camper threading the needle, see the two marks. There's the orange inflatable and the white inflatable. As Chris Nicholson looks like he's going to jive around the lured end of the, the gate. This is Mark II. <laughs> Four deck full court press as they enjoy the sun of Miami as Camper comes around. Oh, nice work by Sanya, moving along nicely. Parrot ponting in the background. And this entertainment capital of the world. This is the entertainment being provided by the six boats here. The Volvo Ocean Fleet, anybody well, just with a naked eye can see what's going on from the beach there. Uh, binoculars give you a few close-ups. But it's a beautiful day to be out yachting, especially when you're getting a ride on 
one of the finest yachts of its kind in the world. A treat indeed. Puma Ocean Racing sneak inside Telefonica. Puma are going to be just a bit slow here as they come round and slow up. You can see down to Lourdes there you've got uh, Telefonica. Hard for the trailing boat to uh, generate any speed from that uh, press position to Lourdes and behind. We can see Telefonica goes bow down. Hard to speed build when you're in a, in a position of turbulent wind. Up the front, it's... Um, Sanya. Like they've got some nice fresh breeze out there. As yeah, well. now Sanya are under they're under the pump here from Group Armour. The Group Armour's fast. I think there's a lead change. Yeah, she's a quick boat, eh? And Sanya came round that mark ahead, but it did, when we came away from that shot, it, it looked like uh, Group Armour were pushing through to lure. It would look like Mike Sanderson doesn't have the pace to hold off. Group armor. There's the Miami skyline behind the fleet. Quite a view from out at sea. And it would have been a welcome sight for these guys when they got in just a week ago. But they've had a week to enjoy the sights and sounds and uh, have, a, have a bit of a relax before we get back onto the sharp end of the action tomorrow with the. First of all, the import race, and then, of course, the restart on Sunday. Group Armour uh, did a really fantastic job coming up to Miami. They were trailed the fleet by hundreds of miles and then took a few gambles that all paid off coming up through the Caribbean, threading their way through the islands, and, uh, and sneaked right back up into, into third place, which was a, a remarkable achievement. Certainly was, and uh, that, that four boats that lead the Volvo Ocean Race or, or in fighting distance of attacking it Telefonica. Really closed the gap, didn't it? Absolutely. It the whole fleet back it, in. It, it, with Telefonica getting a fourth, it really has uh, opened the game up. And I think it gives a lot of relevance to the race tomorrow, actually, the import race, points to offer. Well, it's points, it's morale, it's, yep. it's all those things, and the, the psychology of it. So we're waiting for an absolute cracker tomorrow. It's, it, it's of huge importance. Mark three, Group Armour, lead change. They sailed round Sanya. So Group Armour showed a nice bottom mark rounding by the VIPs and the crew on board. And uh, this is a fast boat. They've sailed through to Lourdes of Sanya, who come round second. And next will be uh, Camper coming up towards uh, the yellow mark. But really, um, I think the legs, League Six Martin has uh, opened the game up. Mm. And, and coupled with League Six, the, I, I think back to the import race in um, Atajai and, and Telefonica making that mistake of going around the mark the wrong way or going around the wrong marker. In the context of the Volvo Ocean Race, is that a turning point in the race? Has that opened the opportunity for uh, Camper and, and Group Armour? And Puma really to be right back in the game, and so well, there's only I a think couple of points between Puma and and, and, and Emirates Team New Zealand. And, and I think we're re really entering into an interesting um, stage of the race. Coupled with that is uh, the, how the teams have utilised their sail inventories. Some of the teams I understand don't have any new sails left, so that means the sail makers working hard to make sure that uh, their equipment, their sails, their engines are good for League 7. As Telefonica comes round, they still lead the Volvo Ocean Race, but my word, they've opened... Um, the door is a little bit open, I think, Just a for, little bit. for um, those three teams behind them to put them under attack, including Puma. And, of course, we'd love the game to close up even more and make it more and more exciting. There's always been this... Uh, hope that maybe it would be decided in the end with the very last race in Galway. And it could. And it could. It, it could. could. Could come down to it. That would be pretty exciting. Abu Dhabi. Azam from the United Arab Emirates. Guest at the wheel. Oh, he's got a bit of a privilege. A bit of left and writing and Ian Walker there explaining 
how to get round the mark. This is a, a privileged position indeed, driving one of these boats. So here's a replay of that uh, incident at the top mark. Group Armour, Camper, Puma. Now, the boat to watch as they come in will be the, the, the boat that's trailing, actually, Puma, when she tangles with, um, with that group. Now, Puma, starboard boat, the other boat's required to keep clear. And it was deemed that um, they didn't keep clear. And then the penalty turns by Abu Dhabi and Camper. Camper actually did a pretty nice job of uh, getting rid of that penalty turn and not getting rolled by... Um, Telefonica. Telefonica did have a, an issue with their jib yeah. uh, when they went down on that free leg. They weren't hoisted. They're a little bit out of sync. And Camper survived. But uh, Kenny Reid took the opportunity. But it didn't. I mean, it looked like they dipped. But uh, of course, when they when that happened, the rigs actually the rigs come quite close together. Oh. There was plenty of separation between the hulls. But if you think of uh, where the masts were in relative to each other, that would have been the issue. The question was asked by uh, Puma of the umpires who are making the rulings on, uh, on the water. We saw the red flag displayed, which meant a, a penalty turn. But coming down to the finish, Group Armour, they've kept out of, the, out of trouble. They've shown good speed. They've come from behind. They passed Sanya. So Group Armour, again, show very good pace, Martin. They do. And is that the difference between the generations? Because it was just, they just accelerated straight past Sanya on that penultimate leg, and then they've just built on. I mean, we weren't seeing them on the, um, we weren't seeing them on the virtual because we've lost Sanya, but we're assuming that Sanya is some distance behind. And uh, we'll, we'll no doubt come back and look at that uh, very soon as these as we go through photo call for everybody on the wheel get that pinned up in the office this was how i spent friday racing racing on a volvo ocean race a volvo 70. pretty good bragging rights aren't they oh really? yes <laughs> certainly something here's sanya about. finishing and uh, you can see there that's a, a pretty hefty gap 40 seconds and they were just nothing they could do about it. They were just uh, walloped by a faster boat in the end. But they're so really well to have been in the lead for that long. Yeah, they had a good start. Sanderson Very got start. off the line. That's what he'll be hoping to do tomorrow in the import race. Uh, you know, this boat's a little bit slower than the others. And, and for Sanya to have any chance to hold off these other boats, uh, they really need to be off the line, Martin, probably first or second, mm. and then go into the defensive mode to um, protect to, it. to prevent a pass. Mm. Camper, who had to do a penalty turn, they did well to get rid of the turn without um, losing any, sp any spots. Well, that's the second third for them, so they've had a first and uh, two thirds today. Rupama in race one, they were uh, they had a third, and then they've won this last one. And no matter what anybody says, uh, well, winners are winners, and they really will want to. Everybody who does this goes in to win. Getting the photos for the the album. Yeah. So Telefonica across, and more happy snaps uh, for, the sail for the guests out uh, on the wheel. Interesting name for a boat, did you see that one? There? No, I didn't take so. Speedboat called Carol May I, A-Y-E question <laughs> mark. Hmm. It's open to a variety of interpretations. On board with Puma. Guest at wheel. And I've got the little goodie bag with the Puma cap. It's Ken Reed, I wonder if he's had his peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch. Creaking and groaning of tight sheets or sheets being eased. Ian Walker with a just thinking what they can do. 
So, well, that's pretty much drawn the action to a close here on Pro-Am Day on the, in the sunshine state of Florida. Uh, we've enjoyed having a bit of a warm-up here uh, ahead of tomorrow's racing. So, race start uh, tomorrow is 1 o'clock local time and we'll be on air 15 minutes before that uh, to bring you all the action from here in Miami. We're really looking forward to it. This is going to be an absolute crunch day here with the, the race very finely balanced. Every point vital for the top four yachts, any one of whom could find themselves covered in glory come the finish in Galway in a couple of months' time. But uh, first of all, the in-port race here tomorrow. This will be the Port Miami in-port race. And we'll be bringing you the action uh, from with all our cameras, the helicopter and the whole business tomorrow. And we look forward to it. So that's the Port Miami in-port race. And now from the EF International Language Centre, where we're broadcasting from, which is for affording us this fabulous view across the race course, we look forward to bringing you the Port Miami rate in port race tomorrow, part of the Volvo Ocean Race coverage from Miami in the Sunshine State of Florida. From now, from us all here now, a goodbye.